All right, what is up, everybody, and that welcome to EG vs. Alliance in the Northern Arena Beat Invitational. Uh, this is going to be game one, and we're going to get right into the draft right now. Uh, it's a bit underway, but Alliance will ban out the Drow Ranger as well as the Wisp. Ten so, to go. Wisp being one of the top picks for EG right now, which Five is pretty seconds. odd because they're not known to be a team that run Wisp that often, but with uh, yeah, Crit wow. taking leadership as well as Zai, both Wisp Radiant players, they Bam. do favor the hero, and so it will get banned out by Alliance in the first phase. Instead, EG would go for the Warlock and Venomancer, first two picks, uh, some dank-ass strat they've concocted. Uh, usually they run, uh, it could be Ten either a jungle Venomancer or an Arteezy safe lane Venomancer. And they've run Five it uh, a couple times versus um, NP. And they're able to be quite successful with Reserve it. Time. And they'll ban out the Batrider as well as the Ogre. Dyer's pick. Batrider is uh, being a solid hero. You see it being played in every series uh, of the last series. Or every game of the last series, uh, where Complexity was playing against Ehome. Monkey's Forever, of course, that being his signature hero. And uh, Ogre as well, being one of the top tier picks. And it's quite surprising seeing it banned out Five so seconds. early. But uh, Alliance will pick up the Slaughter as well as Reserve the Witch Doctor time. tiers that have some natural synergy together as the Slaughter Ultimate does provide a bit of extra damage for the Witch Doctor Ultimate. <laughs> You have to excuse me a bit as uh, my nose is a bit stuffy. I'm gonna have to ha handle this. <laughs> Alright, should be good. Just uh, talking for a while like this. And the weather is changing. I get, uh, I get some congestion, but I should be good. Uh, we're going to get right on with this cast. Evil Geniuses will decide to Radiant's ban out the Life Stealer as well as the Juggernaut. Uh, Life Stealer, of course, being very good combination with the Slaughter. And Juggernaut also being a pretty powerful either carry or mid hero. Just able to have that healing ward to Ten survive through the Fatal Bonds as well as Venomancer, Ultimate, and uh, overall Five all his damage. Seconds. It's really damage over time, and the healing ward can really nullify that. So they go for both of those bands. Life Stealer as well having the rage to deal with that too. Alliance will decide to ban out the Medusa, a uh, hero that Sumail plays very well, and they run in combination with the strategy before. Ten and Beastmaster as well, a uh, hero that I'm pretty sure they've picked up for Universe. Five seconds. But instead they'll go for the Clockwork. Uh, here that he's also played with the strategy, so it's uh, looking to be cutter, cookie cutter Reserve strategy right time. now. The Warlock Venomancer Clockwork. Uh, EG coming out with the Dank Strats. Uh, I'm a big component for the Venomancer, and I'm glad to see it being picked up, but I'm not sure if they're going to play it the right way. You really got to get the taunt, right? You got to get the Venomancer taunt. You got to get the banana. You walk into the lane, you make the squeaking noise. Or you start in jungle, farm up in the jungle, make the squeaking noise once you get to lane, whatever, you're like, haha, I'm level 5 from the jungle, you didn't stop me, and then you just annoy the freak out of your enemies until they get pissed off and try to like, kill you or something, you turn it around with a TP rotation from the warlock or whatever, and then uh, you won the game. But uh, unfortunately, I don't think they used the taunt on EG. But uh, it's definitely a very useful tool. But uh, getting back on a serious track, Alliance do ban out, uh, or they do pick Timbersaw as well as Rubik for their second phase. Overall, Timbersaw being Ten a pretty good go. hero here, as uh, he does have a lot of damage onto Five EG's seconds. heroes. He's able to explode the Veno quite quickly. Reserve time. And uh, Rubik has a lot of good spells to seal as well. Just, uh, cogs and fights, uh, Warlock Ultimate, even Veno Ultimate. Uh, most of Veno's spells are pretty good steals. So EG will be deciding on what they want to really pick up next. And it will be the Sven. So it's probably looking to be a support Venomancer this game. is going to be in the jungle. 
while we see our TZ pick up the Sven because I don't see Sumail really playing that hero mid. Ten seconds to go. Oh, five be seconds. in the last banning stage as Alliance will be deciding what they need to ban for Sumail. Reserve time. Uh, there's a lot that he can play, and uh, they'll choose to get rid of Radiant the OD. A very powerful hero that can go into Timbersaw. Uh, it's looking to be probably a mid Timbersaw this game. Now, EG will be deciding on their last ban. They're probably going to ban out a uh, carry here for Loda, but he has a pretty Ten diverse hero pool. Go. So, it's really up to Alliance what they want to run for him. Five uh, seconds. Definitely want some type of physical damage dealer to really uh, Reserve synergize with the Slaughter pickup. Uh, let's see what they could pick here for a safe lane that is left. Potentially something like a Slark, maybe. It does pretty well against uh, most of the heroes they have so far. Clockwork could be a bit of a noise, annoyance for Slark, but uh, doesn't counter him as hard as uh, other off lanes, such as like maybe Sand King or even Slaughter. But uh, they already have the Slaughter. He doesn't have uh, really an AOE stun. You can like hook him or something and like annoy him with cogs, but you'll actually get rid of the SF, so they'll expect the uh, safe lane Timbersaw. Maybe safe lane slaughter off lane timbers saw. I don't think that is good at all. I mean, with the jungle venomancer, they actually Ten might just be able to, to send him off lane. He's gonna be able to get a bit out of it because he matches up against Warlock Five and Sven seconds. okay. Yeah, especially if he's gonna even receive Slark. support. And yep, they'll get with a Slark as the last pick as expected. And it will be played by Loda. So EG kind of reading Someone's that uh, a bit off, and instead they'll just pick up the Invoker for Sumail. Were they even attempting to pick up the SF and they banned it by accident? Because they do have the SF Clockwork combo, as well as Veno combo. Man, they can really, uh, really get them up those early souls. They really want to there. You go in the Roche Pit? Put the wards down. Yeah, have him deny up the wards. What a player! Easy souls, but instead oh, they'll have the invoker. He'll sun strike their pool. I'm gonna off direct the camera. See a TP in from the top lane by Rubik. He's gonna be placing his wards down. And there's gonna be no TP in from EG, so he's gonna get his ward down unspotted. It's gonna be directly in the middle of the lane. It's quite a uh, not so common to put it directly in the middle like this, but it's, it's relatively fine. Gives good vision. Usually you put it further forward so you have more bit more vision over the tower, but instead he wants to vision over the entire lane. I'm gonna call GLHF. Artiz is gonna send the bot to uh, block anyone from coming here to potentially ward up, and they'll put this ward. This ward has been uh, any popularity I've seen in most games I've casted. Chinese teams put this ward as well. Thirty seconds to go. So it will be a timber saw in the mid lane, and Slaughter will head off. He'll buy Iron Talon, so he's gonna be able to jungle up if he needs to. This is what build Clockwork went for. He's gonna go for the lane build because Clockwork is not uh, so good in the jungle. There's going to be another pause. This game has been delayed for quite a bit. And uh, it's going to be a quick pause, so. Alright, carry on. Zai with Iron Talon ready to jungle up on this Venom. A very fast jungler. And our lines really and don't have uh, the heroes to contest him that well. Show really want fun. something like uh, Ricky or like. Uh, Chen, Chandris to really push him out of the jungle. Otherwise, you come here with like a Rubik. Sure, you're gonna slow down him a bit, but you might even feed a kill away. If he hits level 2, instead of a skill and poison sting, he'll just skill the venom as a gale and get a kill, and it's worth it for him. He'll slow down his jungle a bit, but it's gonna make you leave for sure. 
put his wards up, set them up, getting ready for the camps to spawn. And as soon as they spawn, he'll start working on the big camp with his iron talon. Please watch this drum. This is very fast drum. This hero can just uh, jungle extremely fast unless you get to do it correctly. And Slara will go directly to the jungle. He won't even bother with this bot lane as Warlock does have ability to zone him quite well. He's having a lot of range, decent damage. As well as uh, ability to even level up the Shadow Word and uh, send out that. It's like 180 damage nuke or something like that before reductions. Before reductions. So now we'll be doing quite well against this Timber Saw mid. We just saw this matchup last game and uh, so now it's gonna be able to do a lot better than Cancel did. I mean, without going the weird alacrity. Freaking lightstone build. He's gonna get boots first. And that's just down to Sumel being a very good mid laner. We'll see Timbersaw get his farm up now. So he does manage to do quite a decent amount of harass to him, but. Timbersaw, of course, his matchup against Volker isn't too bad. His eyes can continue to farm up the jungle. It's going to be a relatively slow game right now in the early game. There's not much rotations happening in terms of uh, early ganks. Both sides are just trying to get their farm up. And both Rubik as well as Witchdog are going to make a play into Universe right now. And it's going to combo that into a pounce. And that's going to be first blood to Loda. This uh, universe getting caught up by Rubik coming in from the river, didn't quite expect it, and feed away the first blood to Alliance. While uh, Jonas and Fan will just be continuously farming up this camp to slaughter. Need a slight need for Alliance, but they still have to deal with this eye. This is a problem. So, uh, this jungle veteran so really gives a lot to his team. Gets a lot out of the jungle, and now he's gonna walk back to base and most likely walk to a lane. You see, he only takes three minutes to jungle, and uh, he can get level five and just immediately make an impact in the lane somewhere. Yep, and he'll pick up the boots of speed, temporal scroll, as well as a magic wand. And five minutes, magic wand, infused raindrop, and boots. Gonna TP to the top, most likely, yep, and start pressuring the Slark. And you're just a slark, and this is where the taunt comes in handy, right? You get the taunt, you walk into their lane, and you're like, Hello, I'm a level 5 Venomancer, you're level 3, and you're level 2, or level 4, and uh, you feed, but then you, you have a taunt here, so it makes it better, right? The clockwork uh, almost being able to save him with the cogs, but not quite, so we'll actually just TP the top to feed. And uh, that's not what you do with your level advantage, but if you had the taunt, at least you can uh, ha apply some psychological warfare. But uh, the problem there was he kind of got to the lane before Clockwork did, and the universe wasn't quite there to help him out. And they go on him with three heroes, and he gets taken out. He might be level 5, but if they have three heroes like that, you're not going to be able to get away. So, Zai playing a bit too cocky there, feeding away to kill. He'll buy the wars now and he'll walk his way back top again. Slardar level 4, uh, going in for a gank on Tsumo, who's managed to pick up a DD -er. Sven has just been free farming bot and pretty much crit as well. He's uh, farming up the camp, so he does get good levels on himself. We got level 5 on the Warlock. Guess what's happening the dire bottom tower. So we'll make a push into the bot lane, which will force the slaughter and TP to get the experience as well as try to defend as much as he can. But uh, this catapult is really low and there's no creep wave anymore, so it's not gonna be able to do too much damage in this tower. Warlock will TP top with his level five, they go to go for a three-man pressure to this top lane. Funny enough, Clockwork actually being the lowest level hero as off lane. Dyer's top tower is getting yeah, beat down. Gonna give Slark problems. The Dyer went and fortified so he's gonna be able to pressure this tower, and he can't really walk into these wards. He's gonna take a lot of damage Dyer's from top it. Tower he's not gonna have his shadow dance back uh, up yet. 
so just gonna have to just watch them as they slowly take down this tower and catapult. It's the power of the Venomancer, guys. So imagine if you have the banana taunt, use it if you have it, Ty. Please. The dire, my one this is squeak noise, this is tilts low to. They don't get the tower hit last hit. It's quite unfortunate. But uh, while all that was happening, the supports, of course, were titted out. They realized they were going to be able to fight level 5 Venomancer and Warlock. So they tried to make something happen in the mid lane, potentially. But Sumail knows what's up. He's playing back, and uh, they don't manage to find an opportunity to get him. No spectators, please. So, crit and uh, limp. Trying to make a play on crit, er, not crit and limp. EGM and limp trying to, er, limp trying to make a play on to crit, but they didn't manage to get him. He just walks away, his boots, heals up Sumail. And look at the mid lane. Sumail has a bit of denies, but Timbersaw isn't doing that bad either. Well, RTZ has just been free, mar free farming so far. Actually, they managed to get a pick off onto Zai in the top lane. He does get his ultimate on them, but with Witch Doctor to heal up as well as Slark, they should be just fine. And looking back at their draft, they actually have pretty good ways to deal with this Venomancer. As they have the sustain from Voodoo Restoration as well as Shadow Dance on the Slark. He'll have to walk back for mana though. I believe he got like hit burned from cogs or something like that. Instead, they're gonna go for a play on the bot lane with a uh, storm hammer into the sun strike as well as damage from crit. They're gonna get an easy pick off on Slardar. Loda will TP to the mid lane, try to get some farm up, but it's not gonna really do too well against Invoker. Picks up Iron Talon as well, so they have the ability to catch up with the jungle. And he's gonna leave the top lane for his Witch Doctor to get his level 6. But as I was talking about the sustain, uh, all their heroes really have the ability to just heal up uh, in some way, shape, or form. Timur has a reactive Dyer's armor, Slark has Shadow Dance, and the rest of the team can rely on the Voodoo Restoration. And even the aura from Rubik, no field, uh, uh, nullifying some damage from the Venomancer. Because uh, the reason why Venomancer is so powerful yeah, is the ability to get early levels, put a lot of pressure onto the map early, and then uh, snowball that to take in team fights, so having a bunch of magical damage in team fights, making it hard for enemies to take um, mid game engagement. But with the hero lineup on Alliance, they're not, uh, not going to get affected too much by that damage as they have the abilities to survive it. Sumail is pretty far out there, Invoker, getting up to his Midas almost at 8 minutes with uh, that assist on the kill on the bottom. Right the He's a lot faster than uh, Cancel had in last game because he did go for a lot more smaller items, Wind Lace. Uh, no breaking through the dire goes for the Aquila as well. And Sumail just goes straight for the Midas, uh, only getting the magic walk. And uh, of course, a few raindrops. Now the Venomancer and Warlock the duo will head to the bot lane to make top. this push happen. They're gonna get the tower the low, but the uh, timber saw coming in, they're gonna be looking a bit afraid. But the universe is gonna run straight in, zone out to the enemy. And now gonna finish off that bot tower. Rubik falls really low to that fatal bonds, but he's gonna manage to survive. Slaughter picks himself up tranquil boots while Sumail is pushing the mid lane as well. So all lanes being pressured right now by the side of EG. They're gonna manage to take almost all tier ones from Alliance. And uh, before the first 10 minutes. But it looks like the mid will survive for a bit longer. Sumail didn't quite manage to get it. And he will hit level 8. So he already had hit level 8 and have uh, double 4 spirits. So that uh, tower mid should fall relatively soon. Artiz is going to TP to the off lane to defend it against Stark. And he's going to continue to farm this camp. Rubik as well as Witch Doctor are smoked up and they're looking for a kill. They're potentially going to find Arteezy here, but Witch Doctor is still not having his ult up yet. It's going to be a pretty hard kill. And they're not going to manage to get him. Yeah, just continue farming up. And they're like, oh, that was a cute uh, casket, but he's not even going to run any risk of dying there. He's going to go into the Echo Saber. 
Warlock has his ult, and I'll be invited to your party. I'll be flying that. Uh, casting a game right now. So RTZ will stay top. He will get got on by Slaughter, but his team is ready to reinforce. Alliance will manage to take this top tier one, but uh, looks like Ishii is looking to defend or at least fight after they take the tower. Warlock ult will be considered, but uh, he won't manage to catch them, so he will hold off on that. Clockwork will land a hook onto Slaughter, and we see it in combination with Sunstrike, that's gonna be an easy kill him. Alright, he almost got away there, but Superman was able to walk up and hit him with that cold snap. Finish off the kill. Zai, as well as Crit, are now heading mid, and they're gonna go for a pressure onto this mid lane. We'll surely see this mid tier one falling. Crit pump fakes the warlock goal a couple times there. Dropping the base. Just imagine this, right, guys. All right, imagine this. Warlock goes to lane. Metamancer goes to lane, and warlock is just dropping the base. Metamancer is dropping the bananas. You got the bananas and the base combo. That's I'm sure that's tilting. That has to be tilting. Because uh, you can't really do anything about it. If you try to fight into it, you're going to actually eat the base. And then you're going to eat the bananas as well. Because Venomancer is going to freaking drop his wards down. And then uh, poison Nova all over your face. And you're going to take a ton of damage. And you don't want that. It's, uh, it's definitely the combination that you want to get into your enemy's head. But crit, crit catching the clue right there, right? So you dropped the base. But uh, Zai not having the Venom Taunt or not using it. Doesn't really get the demo. Crit, come on, get your teammate in line. They can use the banana to uh, get into the enemy's heads. And they're gonna go for a smoke gank onto the And Clockwork will pull this hook, he'll use it now. No storm hammer as well, and with a sun strike, that's an easy pickoff. And with that pickoff, they're gonna be able to make continued pressure. Lodo will manage to find a lot of farm actually. Uh, he did get a couple kills in the top lane, and even though he got his tower taken down, it didn't hurt his farm too much as he was able to rotate mid to continue farming up, as well as the jungle with his iron talent. And he does pick up a relatively fast uh, Shadow Blade at 13 minutes. The Slaughter is uh, halfway to his blink. Well, Rubik has 6 now, and I'm pretty sure which Doctor does as well. He'll go for the earned build to help uh, sustain his team a little bit more. And uh, there's going to be a pause right now. So. Looks like EG is going to continue their pressure onto this mid lane, but they have to be careful as Slark does have Shadow Blade, and if they start feeding kills away, it could be pretty bad for them. As a snowballing Slark with a Slaughter is quite scary, and once Slaughter gets Blink as well, uh, if Alliance is able to fight into EG, and they don't hold their lead anymore, they're going to start running into problems. Their draft is uh, pretty much based around securing a lead and then keeping it. Able to just uh, get further and further ahead with uh, Sven able to farm up incredibly quickly as an invoker as well. And with a Midas. And just holding that lead, securing it, and then winning in like the mid to late game. Alright, carry on. RTZ will pick up his Echo Saber and his mid tier 2 push. Alliance will just move up some pushing. Loader pushing out the bot lane. While Slaughter and Rubik pushing out the top. Which Doctor is sitting back here and has to find a D ward. Technical difficulties. Hope the Dyer weren't partial to that. Sumail will be TP in top to defend from this push from the Slaughter. So not really a push, but he'll shove the creep wave in and someone has to come and defend that. Clockwork will do the same for the bot lane. Meanwhile, Sven er, will run into Slark and he'll have Shadow Blade. But 
he's alone. Slark is not going to be able to take out Sven alone. Sven will also take a banish or Seder Banisher too to help sack his Ancients, which is actually uh, yeah, it's unblocked by his. Uh, who is this? Yeah, crit unblock an agent so his carry can farm while his eye just farms up these uh, trolls. He does manage to get the stack off just in time. And, uh, his eye can even farm the agents himself if he wants slowly. At least it works them down so it's easier when our TZ gets here. I'm not sure if he wants to steal them. Uh, I mean, it might be a good idea to steal them as he's getting close to his mech. Radiant's bottom tower seen better days. So we see a group up of Lions heroes and uh, backstabbing Sumo as top lane, but he's pretty fast as he has picked up Bujo Travel as well as Windlace, and he might just be able to right run now. out. He has Ghost Walk available too if he needs to, and he's gonna get himself out there. And Hanskin's running into trouble as he's gonna eat that Sunstrike, and what looked like to be a gank on Sumo just turned around to a free kill on the Rubik. What a play from Sumo. The dire, I want mine. He knew that he wasn't in any risk of dying, so he doesn't even invoke Ghost Walk. It was his Forge Spirits, he was just simply able to take out Rubik. Dyer's top tower's getting beat down. Uh, reading his movement with the Sunshine. Dyer's top tower's gone. So it looks like Zai will let Urtizi's uh, ancient stack live. Instead, he'll manage to find the farm for his mech in the mid lane. Clockwork will pick up a blade mail. It doesn't look like Warlock. It's not a Midas Rush Warlock game. Said he went for the Mana Boots and as well as Wards because he knows that Zai is playing more of the 4 role and needs his farm for the mech. He might go back into the Midas. So later Midas. But, uh, we're going to see a hook on Handskin as well. Like, in combination with Sunstrike, that's going to be easy. Can you uh, invite me to a party, please? Slaughter is going to be slowly working on his farm for the Blink Dagger, and with that, they might be able to make a play on Alliance, but as I said, EG's heroes are still incredibly hard to fight into. We haven't seen one yet, because Alliance knows the strength of EG's heroes. But a uh, 5 man engagement into EG could very easily end up in a full white for their team. Timber has a casual cloak, he will not hurting. fully build the hood. He's probably just going to go into Bloodstone as they're not planning on fighting, and if they're not going to fight, he doesn't really need the hood for anything. Radiant's top tower is taking hits. Instead, EG will know they're strong right now and they'll head into the Roche pit. Sumail fighting a lot of farm. Probably at the top of the net worth, and he is. He has Jules for team fighting as well. Alliance will scan this, the universe held that pit. They'll catch a scan on him. But much they can do to stop this and they'll secure a uh, free Roshan for Sumail. Radiance mid tower. Meanwhile, Alliance apart. is making a smoke play towards mid lane with Slark the only one being not smoked up. He's gonna be building into an Echo Saber of his own. Radiance he's gonna be able to push into the mid lane. Up. While EG is looking to put pressure on the bot lane. They know that they're not going to be able to find a fight, so they'll break the smoke to push the top lane as well. Dyer's bottom tower is getting the business. Radiant's top tower is bad. Universe shape. will be building into a four staff. The Dyer best do something about that Dyer's bottom, bottom tower got blown to bits. Now EG is heading Radiant's high ground. Top tower is Zai building into a medallion. Help give his team a bit more armor. Nice play from Arteezy, pulling the creep wave from mid lane into the bot lane using his Seder Banisher creep. And that will make Slark uh, cut the mid wave as well, as so the creep wave won't meet up. So Arteezy is able to clear it out with his cleave. And it looks like EG want to go for a slow siege of this bot lane. Timbersaw will pick up his Bloodstone and Artizi tried to pull the mid wave again, but will get stopped by the Slaughter. We will see the first Warlock Golem of the game, and it will be on to limp, and he'll have to suicide himself. EG will jump in even deeper and pick up EGM on the Witch Doctor. This, uh, two quick kills, well, it wasn't really a kill on the Slaughter, or on the Timber. 
it uh, was a suicide. Artis will jump in again, and just as I said, that our slaughter will fall actually. Noda will be in trouble as well as Limp, who is falling quite quickly to RTZ, who's going to finally run up, but they'll manage to find the kill on him. Subo will actually get the last hit, and that's just the uh, racks for EG. This looked like a very easy game for them, it just looked like a complete uh, outdraft. They just got more farm than map, they didn't really win like uh, in terms of fighting or anything. Like ganks or nothing like that. They just got more out of the map and they got the rose shot for free. And they got the racks for free, pretty much. And now they're gonna be trying to back out. Uh, Zai will get caught trying to TP away. But uh, that's a fair trade for a full set of racks. There's some freaking thing playing in the back. I'll meet this. My laptop started playing some video after the stream, but uh, yep, uh, it's looking to be a fast GG from EG. Yes, they should be able to just group up again with the next Warlock Golem and take another set of racks. So there's this little alliance can do about it right now. And as Timber saw, this has no impact in that fight since he got immediately just burst it down twice. One with that Warlock Golem, the second time just Fen jumping in and uh, damage from Sumail and taking him out. Now RTZ will actually get uh, initiated on by Slaughter and Slark, and he will fall actually. This is what RTZ has to, or he has to avoid feeding these kills away before they able to group up again. And they're gonna find a counter kill onto Moda Slark. And it looks like Isha might fall as well, but her uh, Clockwork will be a trade for it. Slardar as well as Timber should be able to get away. Sumail consider TP again in front of them, but he'll decide not to. Rubik will steal a Venom Ward and uh, start pushing out the bot lane with it. So, decent trade for Alliance. Limp will finally pick up the Hood of Defiance now as they're gonna take team fights. But uh, of course, they still, it's a, still a trade, it's not a full, uh, full on win for them. Kill Arteezy's Art fence and they will shut down his BKB time. So I'm assuming he's gonna go that next. Mitigate the damage that he takes from the timber. As for the Slark and Amplify damage, he should be able to tank that a bit with his War Cry. Breeze finished up on Zai. He's pretty farmed. And uh, the amount of flaming I have got for playing Venom Jungle in pubs is uh, working out for EG. I called it, I knew. I mean. It helped me gain like 500 MMR in like 2 weeks or something, so it has to be legit. The Aegis will expire. We'll see this Veno Jungle being the new meta. I honestly hope it is, because... Uh, I've practiced that shit. We'll see a smoke gang from EG land onto Loda. He'll get pushed away from the cogs and he almost falls to the blinken from the Sven. But uh, he does manage to get himself out there with the Shadow Dance as well as Shadow Blade. Ain't looking good for the Dyer's mid racks. So even though smoke gank was able to hit, they didn't quite manage to finish off Loda, but you know his Shadow Dance is down there, so they didn't really commit anything other than the God Strength as well as Hook selling to the low cooldown. It's gonna be a problem right now as uh, God Strength is gonna be down for Sven. Gonna have to get force staffed and mecked up and gonna get himself out of that. Warlock Golem is also committed there. And EG might have to back up. And at least wait until Godstrike is up again. And uh, they don't have an urn or anything, so RTZ has to hit creeps to heal. We'll actually get a uh, Seder Banisher once again. Overall, it's a uh, really fast creep. And ha with uh, the bonus HP from the Helmet Dominator getting 1400 HP. Uh, definitely valuable. The Purge, of course, can be very useful. Uh, instead of going for the BKB, he'll decide to go for the Salt Carries. He decides that Timber Saw is not too much of a threat. And the threat from the Minus Armor is Slark. 
and for his team, he's overall more threatening. The AC to boost up the armor of his team, and the team fight will break out. Tornado will hit onto the two. I'm not sure if they smell that hit loader. Now they'll know. They'll initiate onto him, but uh, they'll be able to shadow dance up, but being locked down during that duration with the Venomancer Gale, he's not going to be able to get out. Instead, he'll fall, forcing him to buy it back, and it looks like another set of racks for BG. This should be game. I mean, Loda will try to fight it out, but not so much even due to EG's lineup right now with the AC up. Volker with the Agnums as well. And EG's just gonna go for a throw. Not even gonna bother with the top racks. It looks like Alliance will try to fight once more. Coming in from behind with Lim and Loda. There will be initiation onto Ichiab in the front line. Ichiab will fall. Meanwhile, in the back, they try to go on Sumail, but Sumail is just going to turn it around and cast his spells. And Definite Blast will take down the Timbersaw. Loda will make his way in, but uh, he's going to have to walk out and they'll lose Rubik as well. And it looks like GG was called. That would be game. Loda will die in the back. Pretty fast victory from EG with the Venomancer jungle, the dank ass strats. Um, still sad that they don't use the banana. I'm pretty sure that will improve the quality of their game quite a bit. But sadly, no banana from Zai. But we'll see a quick, uh, I believe, 20 minute victory from Evil Geniuses. 25 minute victory. Venomancer jungle really paying off. A bit sloppy from uh, Zai after getting level 5 at 3 minutes. That's definitely the time for that hero. Uh, that's what I do in pubs, guys. Listen to this. I'll, if you want to hear a full Venomancer guide, I might make one. Uh, I'm not sure if anyone's actually watching this, but if you actually watch to this point and you comment, I will for sure make a Venomancer guide, but I might make one anyway. As uh, that's what you want to do with that hero, right? Venomancer jungle, three minutes, that's all you need. I don't even go Iron Talon, I get the. I'm not sure what is actually faster. I get uh, the Blightstone as well as. Uh, uh, what is it called? Fuck. Quellian Blade. I don't forget that. But uh, you get a Blightstone as well as Quellian Blade. I also have a variation where I go on the cliff in case uh, there's heroes that might contest in the jungle itself. And uh, you're less contestable on the cliff. But uh, that's uh, disregarding that point. You uh, get. Uh, Fast level 5, then you rotate to the off lane, or mostly the off lane, usually the off lane. You combo up with whatever off lane hero you have there, and uh, you try to just cancer out their safe lane. And that's why I get the Blightstone, because that's going to help you take down that tower a bit faster. And uh, with your level 3 wards, you can even start cutting the wave. And the enemy can't really deal with that, as they're probably level 2 or 3 at that point, or their supports, and depending on their carry as well, they're not going to be that high level. Especially if your offlaner didn't feed at all, and you're going to hit their offlane, you're going to take that tower, secure that tower gold, farm up the lane a bit more, farm up their jungle a bit more, and that's going to force their safe lane to leave, because you can't really stay there anymore. Uh, usually you want to uh, send the other support there as well, but mostly, sometimes you don't need to. It's, it is, I'm talking about in a pub right now, in a pro game, you, you definitely need to send the second support to secure that tower. But in a pub, just get that level of 5 at around 3 minutes. It might be slower if you get contested a bit. Hit that off lane, then you really want to go, maybe it's the safe lane or mid lane. Uh, if you can't really get a push going because like your mid is losing or something, you just uh, jungle up a bit more and get your mech. Once you have your mech, then you can go for a push for sure, right? And then you continue to fight. Uh, if you, the enemy tries to fight you, if they lose a fight, that's more towers, more gold for your team, and you continue to push your advantage, and overall, it's just super hard to fight into. You try to fight into Venomancer, he, you go with mech builds, you're gonna be able to heal up your teammates, you're gonna ult them, you're gonna have to fight into wards, uh, Gale as well is annoying, and this strat works very well against heroes like Axe and Ursa, heroes that really need to jump in and uh, get out as well, and uh, or jump in and continue chasing, right? Or for Axe, he needs to get out. Right? He needs to try to walk away, but if he gets galed up, he gets hit by wards, he even has a hard time initiating if there's like wards all over the place. But uh, disregarding that, for this game, like for example, it was pretty good against Slark as even though he was able to shadow dance up, the gale hitting him really prevented him from trying to get away. 
uh, in terms of uh, his movement speed and the slaughter as well. And you see how Alliance just didn't even try to fight Ichi for the entire time, but of course that allowed Ichi to take a lot of free objectives as well as uh, including Roshan. And with that Roshan, they were able to just push into the bot lane and that forced Alliance to fight. And of course Alliance still wasn't able to fight as they got so much gold from the objectives they've secured. They were able to secure that bot racks pretty easily, even forcing Timur Saw to die twice there. Dying once uh, to the, the Warlock ultimate, and then the second time to just the uh, damage from Invoker as well as Fen. I believe a Venom ult hit him as well. But uh, yeah, that was a quick 25 minute victory for EG. And uh, see you guys in the next game. Hope you enjoyed. See you in game two.